Monster Hunter has 270 large monsters and I have hunted them all, so today I'm going to be ranking all 200 plus monsters from the main series and frontier. Except for event monsters like Behemoth and Lycian, and also no Zeniths. Time to rank some mon- oh fuck. The tiers from worst to best are Vile Creature, Bad, Not Cool, Alright, Cool, Amazing, Peak Monster. I'm going to be ranking monsters purely based off their fight and design. The only time I'm going to go into detail for a monster's ranking is if I really really like them, or if they make me think unpleasant thoughts. If a monster doesn't fit into one of those categories, then I'll just keep the exclamation short, or skip over them entirely. One thing before I start, this video was recorded before Sunbreak Title Update 4, so if Valkana somehow becomes a vile creature in that time, and I don't mention it, that's why. If it's not Valkana, then I just sound really stupid right now. Gen 1, Bessarios, vile creature, already starting off strong. Rocks aren't very exciting to fight, and a rock who could put you to sleep is even less fun to fight. Cephadrome, you could sit right next to Basarios. Majority of Cephadrome's fight is just chasing him. Sure, you could use Sonic Bombs, but you can only hold so many before running out. Diablos, he's pretty cool. I slightly don't like Diablos because he took the spotlight away from Monoblos, who is just infinitely better. Fatalis, can't place God anywhere but Peak Monster. I'm one who likes Fatalis' first gen fight, but World definitely blew all other iterations of Fatalis out of the water, even including Conquest Fatalis from Frontier. One of the reasons why I love World so much is because of the Fatalis fight. World improves the fight drastically by giving him more than 3 moves. Castle Strayed is one of the best maps in Monster Hunter and yet again World's redesign of it was amazing. Crimson Fatalis Red God isn't as cool as God but cool enough not to be placed in cool. Crimson Fatalis isn't all that different from Fatalis other than giving him a dive move in Meteors. Also, Ingo Isles and Battlegrounds are very boring areas compared to Cashel Shrade and Tower. Gendrome, probably my least favorite drome. Uh, he could go in not cool. Gravios. You think removing the rocks from Basarios would make the fight better, but it doesn't. Gypsros is very ugly and annoying, but fooling the hunter by playing dead is pretty funny, so I won't put him in Vile Creature. He could go in bad. Iron Drome. Got a pretty wicked mohawk, but I'll put him in not cool. Kezu. He's just a penis, there's really not much more to say. A lot of people don't like the fact that Kezu has no theme, but I think it adds a lot of eeriness to the fight. Alright. Kieran. Kieran can go in cool. Lao Shen Lung. I love Lao's design so much. If this tier list was based off design, I'd put him in peak monster. But his fight is very boring, so he's gonna go in bad. Majority of the fight is just waiting for him to load into the next zone. You could leave your game on, go to your kitchen, cook a 5 star meal for a family 5, eat it, come back, and Lao still won't be fully loaded into the next area. His fight didn't get improved that much in GU, it's just he has to walk less so it's less waiting. Biggest problem with Gigantic and Siege monsters before Gen 4 is they don't do much and they have a very little move pools. Mana Blos, peak monster. Yes, he's two tiers higher than Diablos despite their fight being practically the same. Suck it, Diablos! You know what they say, one horn is better than two. Monoblos is the final village boss of Monster Hunter 1, so he holds a special place in a lot of hunters' hearts. Plesioth. I don't know why, but every time I fight Plesioth, all I think about is the Bash Pro Shop logo. People would put Plesioth in Vile Creature without hesitation, but his underwater fight is actually pretty good. But that's only in one game, so he's not going very far from Vile Creature. Rathalos, the Pikachu of the franchise. Rathalos goes in Rathalos tier. Azur Rathalos. I want to make it very clear that I hate this thing, and I'll never forgive it for replacing Bracadios on the box art of 3U, but I'm kind of legally obligated to put it in Rathalos tier. Rathian does not go in the Rathian tier. That, that'd just be dumb. First and second gen Rathian, I hate a lot because it just does not stop going back and forth over and over again. But third gen to present day Rathian isn't that bad. I'll put her in alright. Velocidrome, the first monster. Not much more to say. Put him in cool. Yangaruga, or I like to call him Kyle from Despicable Me. Yangaruga is just Gypsaros without the funny and flashbangs. Yangaruga in World isn't that bad though. Not cool. Both Yankakus can join Yangaruga and not cool. Gen 2. Blangonga. I have no feeling towards this monster, so he could just go in alright. Copper Blangonga. I do have feelings for this monster, and it isn't positive, so he could go in not cool. Angalala. Farting is the pinnacle of comedy. But in Monster Hunter, when you get farted on, you can't use items, and that isn't cool. Diamio Hermitar makes me mad because he has a Monoblos skull on his back, and it feels like it's a sign from the devs saying, haha, Monoblos is dead and never coming back. Also, Diamio is in more games than Monoblos, which just adds insult to injury. Alright, 
Skydrome can go in all right. Boldrome, just a bigger Bulfango. Not really cool. Rajang, wasn't really anything special until his world version, which made him an absolute menace. Rise did tone him down a bit, which is a shame, but at the end of the day, it's still Rajang. He can go in amazing. Jen Garan, goes in vile creature. This is one of the most boring monsters ever. The entire fight is just poking at his legs until he falls down. Rinse and repeat. This fight is so boring that it'll make you fall asleep. I wish this was a joke because this actually happened to me while fighting him during a Freedom Unite playthrough. Most people that like this thing will say that he doesn't attack the hunter because he doesn't view him as a threat. You're telling me the god of the universe used tiny little old me as a threat, but a giant crab does not? Shogun Senator makes me happy because he has a Gravio skull as a shell. I also want to point out his funny disco move. I like Shogun better than Daimyo, but... Not by much. You could just go right in front of him. Chameleos. Amazing. A chameleon elder dragon sounds cool, and it is. Ushala Deora. Ushala was pretty annoying before World, and somehow they made him worse in that game. But Rise improved him a lot. I could actually hit Kushala and Rise without poisoning him every 5 seconds, so that definitely is an upgrade. Ushala can go in not cool. Lunastra. I love Gen 2 Lunastra fights, since it's treated as an actual threat. Lunastra's world counterpart is fine. The combined supernova with Teostra is pretty cool at least. So Lunastra can go in cool. Teostra. Gen 4 Toaster is an awful monster, but its other counterparts aren't that bad. It could go right beside Lunastra and cool. White Fatalis. God, but he's old now. Peak monster. Fatalis, but he has red lightning. I don't need to say anymore. Yamasukami, another big boring monster. I never want to fight this thing ever again. Vile creature. For some reason, they didn't have the Acanter icon, so I'm just gonna shittily edit it in, so if it looks scuffed, sorry. But anyways, Forklift monster goes in amazing. Tigrex, oh no. Tigrex is one of my least favorite monsters, and the urge to put him in vile creature is killing me. But I'll refrain because he definitely doesn't belong with Yama. Tigrex is Gen 1 Rathian, but he never got fixed. He just goes back and forth 6 million times and roars a billion times. He should be known as the Stunlock Monster, but at least I'm not falling asleep while fighting him, so he'll get going bad. Nargakuga, a flying wyvern that doesn't stunlock you. Amazing. Arguably has the best roar in the series. You can lose. Shovel Monster goes in amazing. Gen 3. Ignactor is such an amazing monster. Sure, he does get hard. Maybe I should have worded that better. But unlike Basarios, you can remove their hardened skin. Glacial Ignactor. I'm a sucker for ice monsters. Peak monster. Berioth. I never had strong feelings towards Berioth. It's not better than Nargakuga, but it's definitely much better than Tigrex. So I'll put him in cool. Dan Berioth. This thing did not need to exist. Stop putting ice monsters in the desert. It doesn't work out. All right. Baroth. Muddy man. Going cool. Devil Ho. The hungry pickle monster. The question is, can he eat his own tail? And the answer is sadly no. So does he really deserve amazing? Yes. Giganox. The very wacky alien monster. They did the impossible and said, what if instead of one hole, it had two holes? Giganox will go in the cool tier. Gobel. Before I say the following statement, I want everyone to know that Gobel is a vile creature. Now that is out of the way, I think this monster gets a bit too much hate. His fight underwater is absolutely awful, but when he goes out of water, he's not terrible to fight. Sadly, most of his fight is underwater though. Great Baggy. I don't care about you, let me talk about the superior great. Go in the alright tier. Great Jaggy. Peak monster, baby. Deserves nothing more, nothing less. Great Jaggy is infinitely better than all the other greats and drones. If you say Great Jaggy isn't peak monster, I will think of you differently. The fight to design everything about this monster is just a 10 out of 10. Lagiacris. Most people know that I love Try, and I will never forget fighting Lagiacris for the first time. I was awful at the game due to it being my first monster hunter, so it took me a while to kill him, but when I did, I felt unstoppable. I usually point to Lagiacris for why underwater combat is a good feature. The hunter is going into the monster's home territory, so obviously they are going to be stronger than the hunter. But then you make the monster go out of water and the fight becomes easier, because that is the hunter's territory. And no monster displays this any better than Lagacris. I feel bad whoever fought Lagacris in GU first, because his fight is a disgrace in that game compared to his tri counterpart. Lagacris goes in amazing. Ivory Lagiacris. Take Lagiacris, put him out of the water, keep him there. What an awful thought. Why does this thing exist? But at the end of the day, it's still Lagiacris. Cool. Abyssal Lagiacris. Take Lagiacris, put him in the water, keep him there. What an amazing idea. Abyssal is just Lagiacris, but if he was never gaslit into going on land. Also, Black Lightning is so cool. Peak monster. 
Turtle Pecco is by far the best bird wyvern in the main series. I love this goofy little fella. His big beak with the puffy red chin is such a great design. Also, he could call in Devilho, which is absolutely terrifying. Torpeco, amazing. Both Ludroths can go in cool. Uragon, vile creature, no questions asked. Uragon is one of the most annoying monsters. Silly because half of his fight, you can't even hit him. He's just rolling around. Alachion's tri-fight is great, but what's even better is his world fight. I remember being very excited for Alatrion when he was announced for world. And when I fought him in world for the first time, it blew me away. You either like Eschaton Judgment or hate it, and I'm in the love it boat. I actually like the idea of breaking its horn to nerf the judgment. I think that's genius. Also, the sound Eschaton judgment makes- Oh my god! Latrion can control all elements too, which is just insane. This is a no-brainer peak monster. Theodis, peak monster. Everything about Theodis is amazing. The buildup, design, fight, atmosphere, it checks off a lot of boxes. And it's a shame that if underwater combat never comes back, it's bye-bye to Theodis forever. Jen Moran. Most people consider Jen to be the best siege monster, which is a fair point. I used to think that as well, until I gave it some thought, and refought him solely to rank him for this video. What siege fights do right is the atmosphere. No siege monster has a bad atmosphere. All of them are good. Jen definitely has the best atmosphere out of all siege monsters. Going back and forth between the boat and climbing on his back is so cool. The problem with Jen Moran is he really doesn't do much. He occasionally slams into the boat, but that's about it. And when it's time for his second phase, he basically becomes Lao. He just waddles. Looking back at it, Jen is definitely not a peak monster, but he did bring forth one of the best fights in an atmospheric way. Amazing. Arzaros can go in cool. Garambaros. The tail swing spam is just annoying and gets old pretty fast. Not cool. Great Rogi's alright. Green Narcacuga. The fight itself is still Narcacuga, but why green? I, I don't get it. He's going alright though. Lucent Nargakuga. This is how you turn a great monster into a fantastic one. Nargakuga was always known to be a stealth monster, but making him go invisible just brings it to a whole new level. Also, leaving the red eyes with a trail effect visible at all times, even when he's invisible, is such a great detail. Peak monster. Langombi. I love his design so much. A rabbit that throws comedically large snowballs will always be funny to me. He could join Azeros and cool. Nibble Snarf. Peak monster. His name is funny. Vulvadon. We already discussed that farting is not cool in Monster Hunter. Bad. Zenogre. I love fighting Zenogre. He is generally one of the funnest monsters to fight. The dodge timing is super simple to memorize and has a good overall move pool. He feels a lot like a Souls boss. Also, his theme gives off I'm gonna kick your ass vibes. The Nogur can go in amazing. Amatsu. Peak monster. Design alone says it all. Another monster that checks off a lot of boxes. If he doesn't return in Sunbreak, I will cry. Brachydeos. I am one who isn't that big of a fan of Brachy, especially old world Brachy, but even world didn't change normal Brachy that much. I get why he's super popular and all, but he's cool. Dire Morales. A Big boy finally showed up. Dire Morales is my favorite mainline monster. What is there not to like about him? He's Fatalis if he was a huge volcano and had cannon wings that blew out meteors. This is where gigantic monsters started to go uphill, because Dire has an actual moveset, which is just Old World Fatalis' moveset with meteors coming out of his wings. The atmosphere in this fight is something else. When I was younger, I thought the Tainted Sea was lava, then I grew up. I wish younger me was right, but Redwater's still cool. If Underwater doesn't come back, then I don't want Dire back. They'll just ruin his fight. Dire Morales only deserves peak monster. Gen 4. Kachawaka, the funny monkey anteater monster thing, and going cool. Molten Tigrex is the best Tigrex, but that's not saying much. I probably like Molten more than regular Tigrex because he moves slower, or at least it feels like that. A lot of people praise Molten, but I'm putting him in not cool. Najarla can go in alright. Idol Najarla goes in a tier higher than regular Najarla. I like that he bounces water off his scales. You have to actually be aware of where he planted his scales, which makes the fight a bit more interesting. Narcilla. I wish there were more spider monsters, but neither of them impressed me. Narcilla goes in alright. Deltas by himself is nothing special. Not cool. Deltas Queen has such a unique concept. Forcing the Celtus to combine with her and pilot her like a Gundam is so cool. Tetsukabra, the little froggy guy that somehow never made it into Rise. He could go in cool. Berserk Tetsukabra. If it was Berserk Tetsukabra versus a hydrogen bomb, he'd just eat the bomb with no scratches. Amazing. Damtrios goes from fat ugly shark to giga chad shark in a matter of seconds. Goes in amazing. Tiger stripes Damtrios, another reason why you shouldn't put ice monster in the desert. Alright. Gormagala, the edgy emo monster. Gormagala has one of the best fights in the series. 
The idea of if you damage it a lot, you get a buff. But if you don't damage it enough, you get a debuff is just genius. It makes the hunter have to do a lot of damage in a certain period of time. But you still have to be careful because Gore can fold you. And you definitely don't want that debuff. Another thing that makes Gore Magala so awesome is in For You, he felt like an antagonist. It felt like Gore Magala was hunting you instead of you hunting it. Which each installment after For You he's in, he is losing that special rival feeling, which was bound to happen because those stories don't revolve around him. Gore is a peak monster. Shigaru Magala. Everything I said about Gore applies to Shigaru, obviously, but they gave him his own special arena that they took away from him in Rise. Shigaru is a peak monster. Daren Moran is just Gen Moran, but less cool. Still goes in amazing. Dalamadur, long stretchy snake boy. Another monster I will never forget fighting for the first time. I remember thinking to myself, is it even possible to kill this thing? Dalamadur is a really big gigantic monster. And obviously, I'm gonna bring up move pools. Surprisingly, he has a decent amount of moves. He at least has more moves than all Gen 1 and 2 Siege monsters combined. But there are still moments in the fight where he'll just stand there letting you whack him. You could climb on his back, which is always a cool feature in a giant monster fight. I also wanted to add that his cutscene goes so hard. Dalamadur is amazing. Oroshi Kirin. All I wanted to say was, why was this thing never added to Iceborne? Better than regular Kirin, so it goes in amazing. Raging Bracadios. Let's just focus on World's Raging Bracadios because who cares about the old one? As you know, I'm not the biggest Bracky fan, but how one phase can change so much. Raging Bracky's second phase is one of those Monster Hunter moments where you just go, well, I'm fucked. Him rapidly punching the ground, causing the explosion of slime to go everywhere is so cool. Sure, area denial could be a bit annoying, but that phase transition is so goddamn good. Raging Bracadios is peak monster off second phase alone. Steve the Pinecone goes in amazing. Dogmazios is a horrifying monster. This is something you'd see in the corner of your eye while having sleep paralysis. Dog has a really good move pool for a gigantic monster. Getting trapped in tar, then him exploding the tar with a mid-ear like beam is such a creative and cool move. Dog is a peak monster. Ostelos, the electric bug wyvern. An amazing concept for a monster. Bolt Reaver Ocelos. The coolest part about Ocelos is his lightsaber horn, but the regular one doesn't use it that much. Bolt Reaver, on the other hand, uses it a lot, which makes him even better. Peak Monster. The thing with Deviants is most of them barely change the fight, or change up the fight a lot, so I'm probably going to skip the explanation of a lot of Deviants. Yameth has my favorite design out of the Faded Four, but he's just a big punching bag. I have to put him in alright. Lavinus. Putting a sword on a dinosaur's tail is a fantastic idea. It's almost like they've done this type of monster before. I actually prefer GU Glavinus to World's Glavinus. I think it's mostly because of GU's combat. Glavinus goes in amazing. Hellblade Glavinus. Making Glavinus able to do the Beyblade move more than twice in a row makes the fight a lot more interesting. Such a simple change, but an effective one. I don't think it's much better than the original Glavinus though, so it could go in the same tier as amazing. Great Macau. A raptor that bounces on his tail. I love this thing. Amazing. Malfestio. Infrared controls sound bad, but A, it's hard to get inflicted with the status effect, and B, just think backwards and you'll be fine. It's a unique status effect though. Malfestio's cool. Mizutsune. Great design and overall good fight with no complaints. The bubble mechanic is very cool. Mizutsune is amazing. Soul Seer Mizutsune. They added a Sans Eye to him. Amazing. Rust Razor Senatar. Giving him the ability to use the Beyblade attack because of the Glavinous Skull on his back is such an awesome idea. Rust Razor is cool. Thunderlord Zenogre. A more badass and aggressive Zenogre. Peak monster. The Karkos is definitely a lower end Elder Dragon. His fight isn't that fun or exciting, but it isn't boring either. His death animation is really cool though. So for that, I'll put him in cool. Atel Ka is a peak monster. Deception in video games can be a really good thing. We often think of bugs are weak. Anyone's initial reaction to finding out a bug is the final boss to Giyu is to think he's a joke. But then a few minutes into the fight, he pulls out a giant mecha dragon that he pilots using the strings that he produces. Also, Prey Mantises are the coolest bugs, so... Bloodbath Diablos is still a Diablos, so you probably think I hate it for that reason. And you'd be completely wrong. Bloodbath is such a phenomenal monster and is by far the best deviant. A monster getting stronger the more you hit it is such a fucked up idea and the fact that they added it to one of the most aggressive monsters is nothing but insane. 
But then again, if Monoblos was more popular, then we could have Bloodbath Monoblos instead. Maybe I shouldn't think about this for too long before I change my mind. Bloodbath is a peak monster. Valstrax the Jet Dragon. Give me a reason to hate him. You can't. Flying down from the sky and crashing into the Hunter at mock speed is one of the coolest moves in the entire franchise. And oh my god, that theme. Valstrax, easily a peak monster. Worldborn. Anjanath. Everybody loves T-Rexes. Anjanath is cool. Bezel Geese. There's nothing more terrifying than hearing a bezel beast roar followed up by an explosion when hunting another monster. Such a good concept for an evasion monster. Amazing. Dodo Gamma. Bunny rock eating lizard. He's cool. Great Giros is alright. Great Jagras. Bunny Apinoth eating lizard. He's alright. Geratotus is not cool. Beatotus knows a bit better. Alright. Legiana goes in alright. And Shrieking Legiana goes in the same tier. The fight doesn't really feel that different and isn't a very creative monster. Kuliaku, more like not cool. Odogaron, another monster that I'm not the biggest fan of that is super popular, but all in all, he's cool. Paliumu, the ugly pom-pom bat, is alright. Nightshade Paliumu, they did not need to add sleep to this fight, he's not cool. Pookie Pookie. I don't even know what Pookie Pookie is supposed to even be, but I still love him. Cool. Radaban. Uragon, if he was covered in tar and actually stopped rolling. Still not cool. Zizi Yaku. His flash move is funny because no monster can dodge it. And he just comes out of nowhere, flashes the monster you're fighting, refuses to elaborate, and leaves. A true Chad. Zizi is cool. Toby Kadachi. There's not a lot of squirrel monsters, and there's even less flying electric lizard squirrel monsters. I love how unique Toby Kadachi is. Toby goes in cool. Claw of Teroth. The internet has ruined this monster. I get Claw is known as the goddess of gold, but why? Just why? Anyways, the first phase where you have to chase Claw is pretty boring, but when you get to actually fight her, it's a really good fight. And her last phase has such a good atmosphere. When she fires the laser at the ceiling and all the gold starts to drip down, Amazing. Nergigante, the first Gen 5 flagship. There's been an argument for quite some time who the best 5th Gen flagship is. And I'll tell you right now, it's not Nergigante. Who is, you ask? Wait and find out. But he's still cool. Nergigante shows that not every Elder Dragon needs to have an element to be strong. Nergigante is amazing. Valhazak. I really like Valhazak. His design is really cool. Hey, editing me here. When I was getting footage for normal Val Hazak, I remembered that the normal one can also have your health, not just Black Veil. I don't know how I forgot about this since it's my biggest complaint about Black Veil. I still do think normal Val Hazak is a lot better than Black Veil because Black Veil's moves are not very fun to fight around and mostly all of them can have your health. It feels like you're eating a Nullberry every second in that fight. Looking back at it, I think Val Hazak should probably be in Not Cool, but I think it's funny that the normal one is four tiers higher. Especially for the people who just skipped to the end of the video to see the results to be very confused. Anyways, back to past me sounding really dumb. Black Veil Valhazak, on the other hand, is a vile creature. The design is still cool, but having the player's health is not fun to play with. He's a monster that you fight one time and never want to fight again. Sadly, I've fought him more than once. Dino Jiva does nothing special and is a very forgettable final boss. Dino is bad. Zoro Magnaros. I view him more as a map than a monster. One thing we've learned from Basarios is that rocks are not fun to fight. Vile creature. Banbaro. A Ramboros, but if he didn't have the annoying spinning tail move. Cool. Namiel. Such a fantastic design, but its fight is not enjoyable at all. Falling in the water over and over is just not fun. It feels like if Namiel was an underwater fight, it would be a lot more enjoyable considering it looks like an underwater creature. Maybe Monster Hunter 6 will feature underwater combat and Namiel will be redeemed. But for now, Namiel goes in not cool. Safa Jiva. Dino Jiva grew up and learned a supernova, which is enough to make him feel a bit special. Safi can go in cool. Jara Ishvalda. Bulldozer rock monster transforms into skinny creepy dragon. Now this is a good final boss. Char's phase transition is very unpredictable and absolutely amazing. Also, I love how Char is always looking into the camera, breaking the fourth wall. Gara is amazing. Valkana. Valkana is tied for the best Gen 5 flagship. Is it tied with Magnamalo or Malzino? I don't know. Wait and find out. Ice dragons in general are so awesome. His attacks are really well designed. I really love the tail piercing move. Can't wait to see him again in Sunbreak title update 4. Valkana goes in amazing. Frontier. I feel like I'm going to be spamming Amazing and Peak Monster, but come on, can you blame me? It's Frontier. Another thing before we get into Frontier is that I'm probably going to mispronounce 99% of these monsters' names, because no one has ever taught me how to properly say them, so I'm sorry in advance. Ebio Rugu, the OG Glavinus. His team is absolutely terrifying for no reason, and he's not even that threatening. 
Ebio goes in cool. Akura Vashimu, a scorpion monster. Somehow a concept that never made it into mainline. Vashimu's alright. Akura Jebia. The reason why they never made a scorpion monster in the mainline games is because they made two of them in Frontier for whatever reason. Jebia can join Vashimu in alright. Noru Patasu. Swordfish Wyvern is so awesome. I love how he turns snow into raining icicles. Anno is cool. Lava Seoth is not cool. Eraganasu and Garaganasu can go in cool. Baru Gagaru. He sucks off the hunter. For blood. Baru goes in cool. Barika Rosu. I found him very annoying. The combination of lightning while getting hit with the whip wing things isn't fun. Not cool. Boga Badaromu. A monster is so strong that he is only a zenith. I know I said no zeniths, but this one is an exception. Also, if there's a zenith version of this monster, then wouldn't that mean there would have to be a normal version? Just saying, normal boga for Monster Hunter 6. Maybe the normal one isn't that strong. I want to point out that I love his big flabby cheeks. Boga is amazing. Dora Garosu. What I said about Bera also applies to him, but he has a supremacy version, which all supremacy monsters are a complete nightmare to fight. Dora is bad. Dio Rexu. Looks a lot like Tigrex, and he still has the charge move, but he stops to charge a lightning AoE, and you could also stop the charge by breaking his skin, so it's a lot better than Tigrex. Dio Rexu is cool. Dio Ragura is alright. Espinas. His Sunbreak fight is pretty good, but not as good as the Frontier fight, obviously. He feels a lot more aggressive in Frontier, but at the end of the day, Espinas is still Espinas. Amazing. Orange Espinas. Fight in Sunbreak was a major downgrade. Again, it wasn't as aggressive, and its Supernova isn't as cool. All in all, still amazing. White Espinas. This is my favorite Espinas. The Fire and Poison Tornadoes are so cool. White Espinas still goes in amazing, though. Bara Nakoku. The electric hop move can get a bit annoying. I also feel very bad when cutting its tail because he squirms around on the floor struggling to get back up. Baru is not that cool. Boro Kururu is the perfect monster. I do not care what anyone says. Boro Kururu has a unique gimmick, which is whatever flower patch it sucks nectar up from, it gets that ailment which always keeps the fight fresh and never boring. And not all ailments are bad. It could drop heals for the hunter if it sucked up the green nectar. His design is so good too. He's a giant hummingbird who whose feathers change color depending on what type of nectar he consumes. The design with the amazing spiral flying animation combined with the theme makes you feel like you are fighting a true mystical being. And oh my god that theme! Themes can only add to a fight, they never make a fight worse. But his theme matches his design and personality so much, making it one of the best themes in the entire series. Burrow is infinitely better than every other bird wyvern, and is by far the perfect monster in terms of fight and design. Furrow is nothing but peak monster. Yasura Bazaru. What a weird interesting monster. He blows poison bubbles, and does a front flip from off the top rope, so that's pretty cool. Alright, Gogo Moa. The big one is whatever, but the baby Gogo Moa that rides the big one's back is pretty cool. The Gogarfs are magnetic wrestling wolves. They have this one move where they throw one another at the hunter, which is pretty entertaining. Lolo Gogarf is a pretty funny name, so he goes in amazing. And Ray goes in cool, because Ray Gogarf really isn't that funny of a name. Gurea Damosu. I hate this thing. It's Basarios, but if they gave him water jets. Horrible idea, vile creature. Erenzaburu is cool. Hypnocatrice. A monster that never returned after Freedom Unite for some reason. He fits in with the mainline monsters a lot, and it's weird that the lava fish made it into another game before the sleepy turkey did. Hypnocatrice is cool. Ayuja Kiki. Area denial and PvE games are very cringe. Cool design, but that's not enough to save him. Ayuji Kiki is bad. Both Orugerons are not cool. Teo Barou is the biggest chad in the entire franchise. There's some motives behind why gigantic monsters want to destroy a fortress and cause the end of an entire civilization. Like how Lao is running away from God, or Gogmazios wanting a snack. All those reasons are dumb compared to Keo Roboru's reason. That is, he thought the diva's singing was annoying. That's right, he wanted to kill everyone in Mezaporta because he thought the diva was ass at singing, which is just absolutely based. He is so strong that he is the only monster in the series classified as an ultra-class elder dragon. Peak monster. Korea Sapusu has so many good moves. When like he puts his little drill horn into the ground and starts spinning. Or when he shakes off the crystals on his back and they explode. Such an awesome monster. He goes in amazing. Morea Ganasu. Put a drill on Espinos and bam you have this thing. Amazing. Midogeron. I don't know who thought it was a good idea to teach the dog flash step, but it was a good idea. Midogeron is amazing. Blinking Nargakuga. Lucent Nargakuga on crack. Peak monster. Odipatorosu. I definitely fucked that name up. <laughs>
A huge turtle with a cannon on his back sounds cool, but it's all right. I'm not a big fan of his fight. Padia Pudia. Normal Padia Pudia is pretty cool. I think his design is awesome and isn't all that annoying until you fight Supremacy Padia Pudia, which just makes you want to drop a toaster in a bathtub. The Supremacy version has so many annoying moves in a very small arena, and to balance out Normal and Supremacy, I'll put him in alright. Baboru Baromu. If the hunting horn was a whale monster, he's very cool. Poka Radon. Kind of an annoying monster. Not cool. Tycoon Zamuza. Easily the coolest crustacean. Amazing. Toradiculus is so awesome. I love him. Feels a lot like if Zenogre was a bird wyvern. And not only because they use thunder, but because Torrid is very fun to fight. Torrid is definitely amazing. Unknown. The edgiest wyvern ever. Also, that violin that plays when you first encounter him just fits so well for something that's named unknown. What an amazing monster. Baru Sabrosu, if Diablos was from hell. Just wanted to eat a cactus in peace. He's pretty amazing. Voljang, if Rajang was from hell. He's cool. Dena Sarisu, a monster with whip wings that I actually like. They removed the lightning and replaced it with water beams and water tornadoes, which is much more tolerable. Dena goes in cool. The Ruru Risu, does he go in Rathalos tier? I'll put him in the second spot in Rathalos tier. Howling Zenogre. Listen, I know this is Immortal Zenogre's icon from Explore, but they didn't have Howling Zenogre's icon, so I'm just gonna use this one instead. So yeah, deal with it. Anyways, Thunderlord on crack. Peak monster. Isu Firiora. An off-the-wall crazy monster. There are very few words to describe Disu because he is just that insane. Ice and fire are always a great combination. When fighting Disu for the first time and seeing him start flying around throwing fireballs while icicles the size of icebergs start coming out of the ground, you just think that this thing is just way out of your league. Also, World's End is such a phenomenal map, and his second phase theme just gives off I'm going to absolutely annihilate your ass vibes. Disu is a peak monster. Irezeren. I know I said ice and fire are always a good combination, but it's also how you implement them into a moveset. Most Eurezeren moves cover 99% of the map, which is just so annoying. Majority of his fight is just countering because it's pretty hard to dodge his moves. And don't get me started on Burning Freezing Eurezeren, who is probably the hardest monster ever. He's cool. Aruba Deora is pretty cool, but he's also a piece of shit. Crystal Ailment is so awful to deal with. He's not cool. Wanzarumu, also known as the King of the Elder Dragons, which is such an awesome title. I love how he has little wyvern servants that attack with him. Wan is just so cool, I don't know how anyone can dislike him. Peak Monster. Haru Domorugu. Just like hat makers in the 18th century, Haru kills hunters with mercury. He's an interesting monster nonetheless. I also like how his wings look a lot like blades. He's amazing. Inagami, one of my personal favorite monsters. Just an overall fun monster to fight. And he's a bamboo gardener. Eek monster. Raviente, the OG big long stretchy snake boy. Phase 1 Raviente is a lot like Gen 1 and 2 siege monsters. He doesn't do much, but then with each phase he gets more and more moves. And there are a lot of Raviente phases. So he gets a lot of moves at the final phase. The only really bad part about his fight is when he coats himself in paralysis, which can get really annoying. Also, he has the best death animation for any monster. Ravi is amazing. Ruka Deora. He's really cool and unique with the whole magnet thing, but his fight would be so much better without the stupid floating rocks that consistently float around him. But even with that, Ruka Deora is amazing. John 10, another over the top monster. Second phase, he could use water. Third phase, he could use lightning. And in the fourth phase, he gets fire along with using all the other elements. One of the first frontier monsters you fight that makes you feel like this monster is way out of the Hunter's League. The phase transition into phase four is so sick. He destroys the airship you are on, and the hunters fall down into a volcanic area. Truly a classic what the fuck monster under moment. Peak Monster. Teo Tetsuka Tora. Damn, frontier icons are very hyper realistic. If Teostra was an ice dragon and a lot cooler, Teo is amazing. Yamakuraya. A little bit better than Yamasukami, but not by a lot. Vile creature. Dore Madeira. The best frontier monster for last. Dore Madeira is the definition of insanity. An elder dragon that uses ice and poison in very over the top ways, with a massive move pool in three phases, making him one of the most over the top insane fights in the entire series. Dore Madeira is also a very fun monster, an 
isn't annoying to fight at all. That third phase transition though, him pretending to be dead while red ice covers their screen, then shatters, revealing a big red orb that drops from the ceiling that Dere Madeira comes out of, makes it by far the best phase transition. He is so strong that they had to remove the three fail faint condition, instead replacing it with a 20 minute timer and every time you faint it subtracts a minute off the timer. He also has a stronger version known as Arrogant Dere Madeira, which is just insane that they gave one of the strongest monsters an even stronger form. I think every Elder Dragon should strive to be like Dere Madeira, an over the top monster with a fantastic moveset that is very fun to fight, an easy peak monster. Rise. For Rise I had to go to Photoshop, because the tier list I was using didn't have Sunbreak monsters, so sorry if it becomes scuffed, and it's already scuffed by the android ass looking icons. Acnazome goes in not cool. Almadron's bad. At first I didn't understand the hate for this monster until Magma Almadron came out and opened my eyes. All the apexes can go in the same tier as their normal ones. Bishiton can go in cool. But Blood Orange Bishiton ruined such a cool monster by removing the fruits and replacing them with explosive pine cones which was a horrible replacement. The fruits were a pretty cool gimmick and that's why Blood Orange goes a tier below regular Bishiton and alright. Gosharag. Bear monster that freezes his arm to become a sword. He's so awesome. Gosarag can go in cool. Gritazuchi's alright. Marshmallow is such a cool looking monster with the pink flames and spikes giving him a samurai vibe. Magnamalo is amazing. Scorn Magnamalo. The big sword sticking out of the front of his arms make him even look cooler than he already was. He's still amazing though. Both Rocknadachis are alright. Thumnacanth is pretty ugly and not very rememberable. Thumnacanth is not cool. Tetradon. God, I love this chubby platypus. Tetradon is cool. Thunder Serpent Narwa, Narwa the All Mother, and Wind Serpent Ibushi are my least favorite monsters. I don't like their fight at all. I just don't understand this fight. Most fights have artillery because the monster shows up at a barracks or you chase it after in a boat. Narwa and Ibushi for some reason just hand you artillery. I get the cannons and ballistas are buried under their arena, but they don't have to dig them up. They also break the rock that is guarding the lever that drops a literal nuke on them. But why do they want to die so bad? I, I don't get it. They, they're bad. They're very bad monsters. I don't like them. Garen Golem, a monkey that punches you with fire and water. He's pretty cool. Luna Garon. When he was first introduced, I thought he was going to be another Odo Garon. But then I fought him and he stood up and he armored himself with ice. Now that's an amazing monster. Violent Mizutune. Definitely the best Mizutune. For now, he goes in amazing, but he might move up to peak monster the more I fight him. Gazma Gorm. Such a good final boss and really puts Narwa and Ibushi to shame. Artillery shows up in this fight because they are delivered by the people of Elgato. And when the artillery shows up, Gasmagorm grows wings that look like the DMC5 logo, while a white light shines and a giant nuke gets shot at you. Also, he could rocket boost himself with his arms in phase 2, which is just insane. Gasmagorm is an amazing monster. Malzino, the best Gen 5 flagship tied with Valkana. Teleporting is cool, but what's even cooler is a vampire dragon that can teleport. Malzino also took a page out of Valkana's book by also having the awesome tail pierce attack. Malzino is another amazing monster. Risen Camellios. I actually like the Risen monsters. I think they are a really cool concept. Camellios is once again the best in the trio. Risen Camellios goes in amazing. Risen Kushala Deora. I've already said that I like Rise Kushala, and Risen Kushala is only in Rise and is cooler than normal Kushala, though Risen Kushala is cool. Risen Teostra. The Risen style fits so well with Teostra. I also really like that he has white fur around his mane making him look really old. Risen Toaster goes in cool. If I had to make a prediction where Risen Crimson Glow Valstrax will go on the tier list, I'm gonna guess Peak Monster can considering normal Crimson Glow Valstrax is there. And that concludes the official Monster Hunter Monster tier list. Here's a scroll through of the entire factual tier list that no one will ever complain about. Now do the subscribe button thing to see more Monster Hunter content. Bye bye.